The point is to recognize and have some awareness about what's going on for us in reality. To have some awareness about why we feel stuck in life. And we feel stuck in life because we developed an identity that gives us a limiting idea about who we are. And it's preventing us from giving our full authentic expression to life. And so this is where, when it comes to seeking love, when it comes to seeking anything magnificent in life, when it comes to seeking your dream job, when it comes to seeking thriving friendships and a community of supportive and loving people, like when it comes to any of these things, if these early wounds are not healed, you know, if these, if these early pains in which you started to identify yourself as separate from others, as I'm over here and they're over there, and there's something different about me from them that we're not equal. We're not on the same playing field. I have to add more to myself to get their approval or acceptance because there's something missing with me. I want you to hear this from the bottom of my heart. If that is how you feel about yourself in relationship with other people, you will not manifest your dreams until that is healed. I am so grateful that I found the healing work that I found. Like I am just so, so grateful that I found my way to the healing work that I found. This was the stuff I needed to heal. This was my identity. Let me just talk a little bit about that transition, how you transition from, from that old identity to that new identity, right? What I wanna say here, and this is in session one of Inspired Love, the first thing we talk about is who you are. Right? It's, it's literally where we start the program. We start talking about who you are and we start with the recognition that most people, most of us don't know who we are. We think we are the story that came from our birth. So I was born into this family. I was born into this situation. I was born into this culture. I was born into this body. And then everything that happened since then and the, the amalgamation of all of that, we think that's who we are. That is our first mistake because that is not who we are. There is something in us that existed before all of that. It's the you that came into the world before any of that took place. Who is this version of you? I call it spirit, the spiritual self, what, you know, any version of that works, right? The God self, it is the essence of who you are. And what has happened throughout our lives is we've taken the idea that I am not enough. There, there are aspects of my personality that are wrong, that are bad, that are not acceptable, that are not lovable. And we have exiled those parts of our personality. Then we have developed protective mechanisms that protect those parts of our personalities. And this is what I call the ego. The ego is the collection of all these protective mechanisms. Okay, so you have the wounded, exiled, childhood parts of yourself. We could call these the inner children. These are the most sensitive, vulnerable parts of yourself that have been deeply locked away in deep recesses of your mind. And they are carrying heavy burdens and heavy pain. Then what has emerged to cover that up is the ego, this system of protectors. And the ego's job is to make sure that those exiled parts of you never see the light of day. So the ego is the face you put onto the world. And I, I, sh I shared earlier, like I used to be so concerned about how I looked and how I dressed and what people were thinking of me, right? These are all the protective mechanisms. This is how I protect myself. Because if I can dress in a way that makes you like me, and I can look in a way that makes you like me, and I can perform in a way that makes you like me, and I can say and do the things that make you think I'm awesome, that protects me. And, and if I can do all of that and I can succeed at all of that, that makes absolutely sure that you will never see the exiled wounded parts of me. Like what it really is, is I carry so much shame around the parts of myself that I've exiled that I have to hide those parts at all costs. And so I put on a performance in relationship with people to protect those parts from ever having to be judged by you. If you get what I'm saying now, just tap that heart a few times. I know this is a little complex, but you, you really need to connect these dots because to understand where we're going, you gotta connect these dots here. So the ego is this system of protectors that has emerged to cover up the exiled and shameful parts of us. Now they're not actually shameful, but we believe they're shameful. So we have this system of protectors that tell us what to do and how to be and how to show up and what to say and how to act. So healing looks like this. If you get behind the wall of protectors, you will find the wall of exiles. And if you can have compassion for those exiles, if you can have love 
for those exiles. But if you can get behind the wall of protectors and you can get to the exiles and you can offer those exiles love, understanding, compassion, the protectors can start to release their tight grip on your life. And those vulnerable, sensitive parts of yourself can begin to find expression. Now, when those sensitive, vulnerable parts of yourself begin to find expression, it's usually very ugly because what you have is a traumatized two-year-old child that was basically stuffed in a closet and told to shut up. That's basically what all your exiles are. They're these vulnerable parts of you that your parents or your teachers or whoever your influences when you were little said were not enough out of pure survival, decided that if my parents are gonna love me and take care of me, I can't be this person. Have some compassion for the little two-year-old you, right? Right, when your parents said, you be a good little boy or you be a good little girl, right? You don't behave like that or you're gonna go to your room. And this little two-year-old system that barely understands anything is going, I need my parents to love me. Like, I, I, I need them to love me. I need them to care for me. And so you start trying to be who they want you to be. And you believe that the part of you that they didn't like was shameful. And so you stuff it in a closet and you locked it away. And for some of you, those exiles have not seen the light of day since you were two years old. And so when you first start to let them out into the open, you first start to let them express themselves, it's gonna be ugly. Ah! And they're gonna be screaming and yelling and, like a lot of times when people begin healing work, it comes out like that. They just need to scream it out. I shared with you, if those of you who listen to the weekly podcast, I shared with you a couple of weeks ago when I was in this healing process and a training I was in where I was held by this group of people and I, I fell back into their arms and they picked me up off the floor. A group of people standing around me in a circle and they were holding my entire body and like cradling my entire body. And, and I just screamed and wailed and cried about the death of my grandmother. Because when my grandmother died, there was a part of me that said, time to move on, time to get on with your life, time to be a grown up." And the part of me that was grieving the death of my favorite person in the whole world got stuffed in a closet. And so when I finally let that part of me out of the closet, it came out screaming, wailing, crying, thrashing. And then when I was done with that, I wanna tell you this. My entire body was vibrating with energy, like I, I, to the point where I could barely stand. It was like an energetic center of my body had been closed down since I was 11 years old when my grandma died. And all of a sudden it opened up and my whole body was vibrating and on fire with so much energy that I couldn't even stand. This is how real this stuff is. We are energetic beings and we think we're like these hard physical, like meat suits we're made of energy and we've we've like shut down our aliveness and locked our most authentic aspects away in deep recesses of our mind to try to be this perfect person in a superficial world and we are dying inside because of it so healing is about developing the courage to let down your protective mechanisms and allow your authenticity out into the world, to let that vulnerability and that sensitivity out into the world. As your exiles start to find some balance, you know, like I said, they come out screaming and crying and thrashing, but as they start to find some balance, as they start to feel from you that they are being met with love and compassion. By the way, I just wanna say this because this may help some of you understand. Some of you are probably aware of inner child healing, right? Inner child healing is basically what I'm talking about here. These exiles are our inner children, right? So what I'm talking about is actually a form of inner child healing. As these inner children start to feel that they are not being exiled, they start to feel that they are received with love and compassion, that they are validated, that they are honored, that they are appreciated. They're not such damaged children anymore. They're actually quite amazing, beautiful, gifted, creative individuals. And so what happens is these parts of yourself start to share their gifts with you. And this is what allows you to become incredibly unique. You know, it's, it's so funny, like we spend so much of our lives trying to be like everyone else and that just makes nobody like us. And when we actually can release the parts of us that make us different from other people, you know, I'm actually just connecting the dots now as I'm talking about it. So I wanna share this because it's so funny is like, I shared earlier when I was a child, how I would exile myself every time I felt different than others because I was always just wanting to fit in and I was always wanting to get acceptance. 
But when it comes to love, you don't wanna be like everyone else. You wanna be different because when you're on a date with someone, you need them to feel something with you where they go like, I've never met someone like you before. I wanna see you again. It's so ridiculous that we try so hard to fit in and be like everyone else and that makes people not like us. And when the most authentic parts of you are let out into the world, people start to go, I've never met anyone like you. Where did you come from? How do I get more of you, <laughs> right? Like, can I see you tomorrow? And, and I'm gonna say like, that's how I felt about my wife. I want everyone to hear this because I, I think this is really what we're looking for, right? We're looking for that experience when we meet someone to go like every person I've ever dated before, like I'm experiencing something from you that is just completely different. And I want more of that. And that's because of who she was and the healing work that she has done is because I truly think that we all have the power to create that experience with someone. But it, it doesn't come from being in your ego and trying to come up with a better strategy. And like when I see all the dating advice, when I see, you know, the, the people, the coaches on social media, or, or when I, I read the articles and things, like when I see all the dating advice, it's all about having a better egoic strategy. It's all about how to navigate the dating apps better or how to say the right words that are gonna make them think the right thing or how to wait three days before you respond so you don't seem needy. The more you invest in strategies like that, all you're doing are strengthening your protective mechanisms that are continuing to limit the authenticity and making you less lovable to people. Like, I, I really hope you get that. The more you invest in egoic strategies, you are strengthening the parts of yourself that make you less lovable. And it's scary. It's scary to let those protective strategies go. Sending you all so much love wherever you are, however you are receiving this message. Thank you for being with me today and thank you for hearing it. Sending you lots of love and I'll be back with you next week. Many blessings, everybody. Take care. Bye.